answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you. As I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well, the limited form you have. But you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Well, suddenly brave of you. I'll say that much. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A tadpole, nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. What are you? A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens. It's yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. I suppose if it works. But if you had opened your mind to it, rather than consuming it, your allies could have taken advantage of its power as well. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the brain, and bring it under our control. All right. What now? So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness. 
even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Soldier. Honest. What do you think of the new look? Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. Fine. What's on your mind? How are you holding up? Don't be so... with Lazelle's. Her heart races as she learns of the events inside the astral prison. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Vos would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truth. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Math Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith the first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people, Orpheus was, is Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup. It was Kithrak Vos himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or should Orpheus go free? We meet Vos in the city, and we obtain the key to freeing Orpheus from his prison. Every word Vos spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our gay slave. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If a Githyanki had to be free, listening. Love Shadowheart's new look. Softer, less severe. Shadowheart looks like a stack of gold. <laughs> Never thought I could get so excited about someone's forehead, but here we are. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. My resplendence honors yours. We have 
have a new look. For a new? Nice as it is, she still doesn't have the best hair in the camp. There's no more radiant sight than that of someone who's learned to love themselves anew. Shadowed in name, but no longer in spirit. It suits her. Fate, dost thou require an...